why another book? Because all of you, you have a book already, so why should you need another book? The point is, there are so many challenges in the world. We think that people really need to read this, what we have written down in the book. So many challenges on the world. Like, uh, what about the future of electricity production? That's the big question what everybody has these days over here at PowerGen. And then, it's such a big challenge because, you know, uh, if you look at this, at the moment, the world is consuming 20 petawatt hours uh, of electricity per year. And in only 20 years' time, this will double. For all the young girls amongst you and so, and all the young boys amongst you, there will be a great future because they need you. They need your expertise. The book is about it. Like, what does electricity do for you? In the old days, you had to clean the floor with a brush, and it was no fun. Nowadays, you use a vacuum cleaner. That's, that's a factor 40 more power what you have compared to your own arms. So that's what electricity is doing for us. That's what a book is telling you, so people can't do without electricity. But then there are the challenges, you know. Sometimes it's difficult. That's what you heard this morning also during the keynotes. What shall be the fuel of the future? Is it gas? Is it coal? Or is it nuclear? Or uh, people have difficulties with emissions? So it's really difficult to decide what to do in the future. But that's why we wrote this book. All the solutions are in the book, of course. So, but the point is also, and I think many of you know that there are many hypes. Like the promoters of storage systems say storage can solve everything. Then you have the people of the big grids. They say a grid will solve ev everything. Then people say uh, windmills and biogas will solve everything. We have a crown prince in the Netherlands, William Alexander. He said, there is so much solar energy. Why worry? Because everything can run on the sun. Now, we know there are challenges. So, like this is the traditional, this is what all of you know. This is a typical picture of electricity used during the day with base load, intermediate load, peak load, and so. The load will maybe have the same characteristics, but the production will change in the future. Like, this is a picture of wind power in Germany of the year 2009. And the peaks are five times as high as the average value. That means sometimes there is a lot of wind power and sometimes there is nothing. Look at this picture. The time that you have really a lot of electricity from wind is very, very small. And there is a big time over there that there is no electricity from wind at all. In such a big country, su such a widespread area. So the book tells you all about it, that this is creating challenges. And this is what Denmark has. People say Denmark is a good country because they have a lot of wind. But look at this, at the, at the red line, you see when there is a lot of wind power in Denmark, they export it all to other countries because the system is not flexible enough. So they sometimes produce so much electricity from wind that it equals base power and still they can't use it. That's a big problem, but there are solutions. You see also Denmark, sometimes they export a lot of electricity, but later they have to import it. When they export, they don't get a penny. When they import, they have to pay a lot. So. Uh, that's a challenge. And then there are people in Brussels, for instance, they say, if we build huge grids all over Europe, the wind power will smooth itself and there will be sufficient all the time. That's not true. I've done some calculations and correlated, for instance, the wind from East uh, Denmark with the wind in West Denmark. And when there is a lot of wind, that means in the, in the, from, your, from the right, upper corner, you see that at both places the wind is blowing a lot. When there is not a lot of wind, you have more variability. But when there is a lot of wind, it blows everywhere. And then they say, oh, this is just Denmark. But look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have added up the wind in Germany and Denmark for a whole month almost. You see, still big peaks. It doesn't smooth out. And then they said, yeah, but Spain is not included. So I included Spain, and you still see there are big, big peaks. There is not a smoothing effect. So smart power generation is needed to compensate for this. This is South Australia. When they need electricity, 
when it's hot during the day, there is no wind. But when they don't need the electricity, there is a lot of wind. So it's a counterproductive thing. So there should be something else to facilitate wind power. Now then what I said, our crown prince said, the sun will make the solution because if you look what the world needs compared to what the sun is shining, then it's so little, but the challenge is big, big, big. This is also from Germany, where they have a lot of wind. You see, on July the 19th, that's a top, that's a top curve. There is a lot of solar radiation and you get a lot of electricity. But then it's in the summertime, people are on holiday and you don't need the electricity. But in the winter time or in the, the, the autumn, when you need a lot, there is no solar energy. Or people say this is simple, we just store it. Uh, look, look what it's doing. At the moment, the top line is when you have little solar energy, then it helps. But when you have a lot, 10 times as much, you get huge variations during the day. And in the evening, when people go home and switch on all the appliances, then there is no solar energy anymore. In the evening, when you switch on the television and the microwave and so. So, challenges, exciting challenges. So people say, we just store it. Now the book gives a lot of examples what it costs to store energy. If you want to store solar energy from the summer time to the winter time, it will cost you about four euro per kilowatt hour. So compared to six euro cents per kilowatt hour, what you pay now, that's a lot of money. Just one little secret. If the Germans would cap their wind power from nine, gigawatt to six, just not by allowing the peaks. They l lose only 1%, 1.7% of total production. That's nothing. So that's not worthwhile investing for. These are key things which have been written down in the book. People, other people say hydrogen. Hydrogen is a great way of storing energy. Ladies and gentlemen, the efficiency is only 20, 25% and it's costing a lot of money. Other people say compressed air because they have this equipment and want to sell it. Now, compressed air has a very low energy density. Look at this. Compared to compressed, co compared to compressed natural gas in a pipeline or in a cavity, it's a factor 100 lower with compressed air. So it doesn't work. So what do we need? Gas, I think the world can't run without gas for the coming decades. Gas will be the primary fuel for backup of wind. If you want to have a lot of renewable energy, you need gas as a backup. There is no other solution. And it's a lot cheaper to have gas uh, pipelines than high voltage lines. It's about a factor five to 25 cheaper to do it via gas, all this transportation. So gas is a good thing to go for in the future. But still, you know, I'm not going to go into details because this is too complicated, but the book tells you all about all these complications that the decision maker in the electricity industry has to make. Many, many, many factors that are influencing you. Finally, the book tells you about smart power generation. You need flexibility, high efficiency, low emissions, low wear, many stops and starts, and some types of equipment can do it. Because I'm on the stand of Vergila, I have to show the engine at least once, because otherwise they kick me from the stand. I'm very glad for their hospitality. But, but if you have a number of such units in parallel, you know you have huge flexibility, low maintenance cost, and high, high efficiency, low emissions. So this is a good solution. So uh, you don't have to read this. Because if you want to know these general truths and tell them to your bosses or to your wife or on a birthday party, just read the book because it's all in the book. So for everybody present here and willing to have it, we have the book available in big piles. Thank you for your attention. Have fun with the reading. Thank you.